Ladies and gentlemen, friends, brothers and sisters, and fellow warriors, this is Bridging the Gap, Episode 8, the only podcast where we talk about all things spiritual and paranormal, and you guessed it, try to bridge the gap between them. Bishop Darren Martell here, alongside my brother and fellow spiritual warrior, Mr. Brendan VC. Very good episode here tonight. First off, how are you doing, sir? We're right next to the new year. I am well. How about yourself? I'm doing well. We just had a wonderful, very reverent, quiet, and solemn uh, sacrifice of the mass we offered and you know it really it put us into a good mindset i believe yes but you know something just occurred to me actually occurred to me today today is the 13th full moon of the year I'm it's also sh- a blue moon isn't it because there's two this month that happened i, I don't know if i'm wrong correct me but 13th Maybe. full moon of the year yes and I, we just offered mass on the 13th full moon of the year so that, that's, right, but you know what that's all right we, we got we, we you know we, you gave it to God, and bam, that's all. That, yeah, but, but I want to start. I, I, yeah, I don't mean to, to interrupt sure. you, but I want to start with a prayer, if I may. Go ahead, yes, sir. One of the topics tonight is the spirit of discernment. Sure, and this yeah. is a prayer of discernment. All right. So, Lord, we pray today for a deepening love of you that would abound more and more in true knowledge and depth of insight to discern what is best according to your word and your will for our lives amen amen Amen. and then then going into that thank you for that uh we have three topics tonight uh kind of three and a half in a way but the spirit Mm -hmm. of discernment we're going to be talking about first and our second segment we'll be discussing the armor of god on an individual and a kind of a well-rounded basis what the armor of god and what wearing the armor of god is Mm -hmm. and then uh the last episode the last segment of tonight we'll be talking about catholicism as a whole we have the roman right right which a lot of people are independent and that's where i fall in as a bishop is independent catholicism and kind of a newer branch of that in itself. But we'll get to that as we go along. But for our first segment tonight, we're going to talk about the spirit of discernment. The ability, and of course, let's kind of just spell that out there, the uh, the spiritual ability. Right. To, and there's a couple meanings to it when you're talking about spirits oh. themselves. Uh, the ability to determine, in, in uh, like we were talking about, discern right. what type of spirit you're dealing with. Well, that's the thing, because it was in the Bible when uh, Jesus was ascending to heaven, he mentioned to his uh, disciples, upon my leaving, we will, I will be sending you my you know, my spirit. Mm-hmm. And that, in turn, is basically is you know, the, the horse of spirit. Pentecost right, right there, yeah. So that that's basically where what we're talking about, is you, you having that personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. Where basically you're telling you do this, not do this, you know, basically making you think twice about before doing something or vice versa. And and that that's kind of interesting because in the conferral of holy orders between the Roman right, sorry that was that was my uh, my kitty cat there. She's our assistant. Uh, but yeah, we we'll go with that. With the uh, uh, the conferral of holy orders within the Roman right as well as the independent right of the Catholic Church. Um, it's it's usually uh, based off of when Jesus said uh, when he said he'd he'd send a spirit down, right. which is a celebration of Pentecost, the tongues of mm-hmm. fire above the heads of the apostles. They all spoke in different tongues they weren't accustomed to speaking in. Right. And when Jesus said, "Go forth, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and mm-hmm. Holy Spirit," that in itself was their ordination. Right. So and basically that's kind of going full circle with what we're talking about here in terms of when you said or when when Jesus before he ascended said I'm going to send my spirit right so now going into spiritual discernment 
Now, which side of that war are we talking about here now? We're talking about... Uh, you, you were talking earlier before we went on air about empaths, mediums. Uh, I mean, well, I mean, there's so many quote-unquote labels with people with ability. Of course, really, of course. Yeah, clairvoyant, clairaudient, medium, psychic. Um, even just being simple em- uh, empath- uh, empathic. Yeah. Now, a lot of people think empathic is the same thing as psychic. There's, I mean, I, it's two different worlds. Two different worlds. <laughs> Basically, empathy means... I can come in this room, you know, and I can feel either you're happy, sad, you know. I, I don't know what you're going out, but I know something is up. Yeah, you, I mean, you, you know. feel that you just, who has the quote of, in a way, disturbance in the force, as they say sometimes. Well, a perfect example, like, like a couple years ago, like, I, like, you know, I'm not going to go too deep into your business, but a couple years ago, you were in a bad spot. Yeah, you, you, yeah you, you didn't care at the time. And I remember it was you two and two of our friends in, you know, uh, Kay's old place, Soon as I would step inside that in that apartment, my, mm-hmm. everything said general quarters, GQ. This is down drill, all hands on deck. It was like walking was, through Jello. I mean, the, it was. I was, like, I, I was on guard. The dark energy that kind of pervaded our life years ago, it, 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 it yeah. seeped out into every a facet that you could possibly it really imagine. Did. But you know, that that's the thing is like getting healthy, you know, getting sober, not not to go into buy like personal business, right? But, uh, finding you know help through Christ, uh, re- rekindling my ministerial love, my my love for the sacrament, my love for Jesus, and my faith has really helped me to grow. And, right. and when it comes to like energy, it's like walking in here now. Right. Whenever I walk into your place, or vice versa, you walk into our place now, it's always just this feeling well, of like, light, like this light energy. Well, even during uh, uh, the Friendsgiving, I, I remember mm-hmm. I, I, was, I was sitting ahead of the table, and I just sat back and seeing everybody just, like when our friend Jane, uh, Jen came yeah. in with her baby boy, you two just walked up to each other, hand off babies. <laughs> hand like, off babies. You know, like, like, take mine, I'll take yours. Pretty time. much. And it's but like, everybody was happy. I mean, everybody was just enjoying each other's company. On a and, personal level, I don't think I felt clean spiritual energy like that. I'm talking about crystal clear like cr- the cleanest like like ocean water imaginable. I haven't felt energy that clean. And I, I mean, it, it was a combination of my mom's spirit, your parents' spirit. Oh yeah. Everyone, um, they were all there. <laughs> I mean, does, I mean, our friend's father was there. I mean, it's just I mean, basically I don't think anybody in that group did not lose a yeah. parent or grandparent. In that, that group, yeah, we've all been through loss, and that's why we can commiserate so well, and that's why we share that spiritual, that that you know, healthy soul tie in a way, right? And but to go back to to the sermon, I think yeah, you know, the Lord knew that we needed that bond because I mean, I didn't even think about it until one of our friends brought up it was basically a our own paranormal team reunion. I yeah. didn't think about it as a reunion. That's the thing is, my friends coming over, yeah. But, yeah, but, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Through all the loss we've all experienced, especially through 2020, <sighs> that that's just... I mean, I think the good Lord said, you guys have been through enough. Enjoy <sighs> this time and, and kind of rekindle and remember family. Count your blessings right here tonight. That's one, uh, that's one thing. I mean, I might, I might take many things for granted in my life. Many things. But the one thing I always try to stay humble with was it was family because I, mean, I, I was a loner kid. I got picked on the whole nine yards. Right there with but, you. but I always knew coming home I had my parents. I yeah. had my siblings. I mean, I was not. It's a, I was alone, but I was not alone. It's you know? a blessing we all take for granted at some point in our lives. Right. Or if, like, you know, constantly. And I try every day I get up to just thank God that I have people. You know, I have my family. I have my son, my, my wife. I've got you, uh, my family. I, and, and just, I mean. I mean, and, you know, it, it's just it's just a blessing. But going in, in talking about spiritual discernment, uh, one thing I wanted to touch on: mm-hmm. there are so many people now, and we've been in the paranormal world for oh. decades. We have a lot of combined experience, oh, and that's God. not a brat. We're not trying to be a brat. No, it just it is just what it is. What it is. Yeah, and um, and there there never ceases to be a time, and it's very frustrating as a mm-hmm. minister, as someone who I go on investigations, and half the time. I don't see the things at the end of the hall when people like you see that pair of eyes, or I don't feel certain things. Right. And a lot of people will say, well, you're just not opened up. You're going to oh, forget my language. You're damn right I'm not opened up. I've learned the hard way not to open up. And yeah, I mean, that's where it goes back to respect the dead, but that's another case for another time. Right, right. But you see so many times that you'll meet new uh, investigators or researchers and be like, well, I'm a, I'm a psychic medium. I'm, you know, I'm clairvoyant. I'm empathic. Um, and at but here's the thing. You don't want to sit there. You never want to shame someone. You never want to call somebody out. No. But there are just certain times where I sit there in my own mind, and I'm trying to be like, look, maybe you're just, it's, 
And it's, it's just and, a and, and, legit. And, and, and a twisted well, in a twisted way, they just want an attention. And want to, so many people want a title or a label. Or they want to be recognized as something. And I get it. I well, mean, I'm well, pretty sure there's plenty of people out there who's like, whoa, he just wants to call himself Bishop, so he can wear the hat. <laughs> Not true. But still, I understand what well, you're I wasn't even thinking about that. But, um, <laughs> no. no, I know. You, you've been... T- yeah. I was like, well, you put yourself out there, uh-huh. but no. Oh, there are certain people in our para community who think that, but I digress. Yeah, Go ahead. well, the whole, I, uh, the, 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 the para unity, that's, that's, a, that's a funny uh, But one. let's digress, but what you were right. saying about, you know, we were talking about um, when we see people who just, it's, they use the titles, and it's uh, become so popular nowadays to say, well, I'm an empath, or I'm a psychic medium, right. well, hire me, yes, I can totally, you know. Yeah. Well, no, because we, we, we both experienced that, because I, re- I remember distinctly, uh, there's one lady, she joined our group for oh, a while, she was, she, exactly she, yeah, she went, she <laughs> said she was a psychic medium, and of course, you know, I give it benefit, the benefit of the doubt, Yeah, we go to this one location in Kentucky, Mm-hmm. It is a big place, and I mean, I've see, I've had experiences here before, but this day tonight, well, we had one personal experience in the hallway, but yeah. it, nothing was documented. But whatever. Yeah. Other than that, nothing happened. But she felt the need to give her two cents to the assistant manager, and like, and uh, well, she tried to. And this comes from someone who's who's dealt in the spiritual turbulence exorcism well, type of she, world. She tried to cleanse the place without permission, without permission in a physical and, and, and a natural anyway, realm, or, or between the veil, the spiritual or the natural. And that no said, permission. and she's also trying to tell the, uh, the manager how to manage her place, and I didn't know what she was going to talk about until I got in there in the night. Like, I just felt the bullets coming. I'm like, yep, yep. I'm, I'm dead. I'm in. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. It's like there's been so many investigations, too, where we've gone to and... Literally, the person, they'll walk into a room, and they'll literally just bust out in tears. And I'm in no way trying to devalue their experience. Maybe right. they're really feeling this. Maybe I mean, they yeah, are. It, it, absolutely. We, we're not going to say what they're doing is wrong or BS. Yeah. Like, no, that's, but, you know. you know, there are certain times where people will follow suit and start doing that too and you can clearly tell when somebody is faking an emotional response or a telekinetic response good example first season of ghost adventures at the uh, trans allegheny the halloween special I mean, when he th- just threw the he voice recorder. the voice recorder I at mean, least they called him out i was that mad yeah, props hey, for them calling him and, out and quick like i mean they were not because because this is the first season and that's the reputation well, what of does line. he think he was gonna what do you think he wasn't gonna get caught i mean it, it's one thing if his arm was completely still just, and that thing flew like the brick in the gold right, hotel yeah. right but you see his arm go whoop. yeah and they literally literally and i'm not the biggest van, uh, uh, fan of zach pagans it, yeah but i will give him credit that he he well, there's no reason he had to own up to it. He didn't do it. Right. But he, for the the sake of his program and this product at the time, he owned up and said, look, this is right. not us. We did not ask him to do that. This and, is stuff you need to look out for on investigations. And I will say this for Zach. I mean, because I, I rep him just like everybody else, but but in his defense, 90% of the teams that exist right now is because of Zach and people like Zach. So, that's it. I mean, that's where the know. commercialization, the popularization of the paranormal but we've, research... We've, yeah, yeah. We talk, we've, you know, <laughs> yeah, we've covered that we every, almost that, every episode That horse like, no. is beaten to death by yeah. now. So. But it, we're, uh, spiritual discernment, though, though, again, there's two parts of that. Uh, right. The one where I feel like I'm drawn to is when you can discern what type of spirit you are dealing with. That may fall into... Uh, when people consider themselves mediums, I'm not considering myself at all a psychic medium or, at all. Any, or anything like that. But, but I do feel on certain investigations and certain locations and times when I'm spiritually of the right... Uh, when when you connect it with a certain being or place. I can understand when something is darker and I should say, oh, nay, nay, I'm getting out of here. Right. And well, when I'm be like, I really don't feel a dark energy. That's That's the level of my discernment. I think that's a healthy level. Well, no, and it absolutely helped because the the last case you know worked on together in Cedar Hill, it wasn't it, it wasn't demonic, right. but it was dark enough to cause concern. Yeah, I mean, because I was out there before and the cleansing fire. The, here's the thing about I, mm-hmm. I will repeat again: if we're if somebody is stretching you how to maintain a safe spiritual environment, you don't take these steps. Yeah, it's just like anything else. It, those their spirits are going to come back and then come back even more aggressive, if not just straight. Mm-hmm. P.O.'d. What you're basically doing, if you don't really have the right 
your mindset, and if you're not prepared, if you haven't done your research really on how to prepare faith-wise right. and right. scientifically, it's like laying a piece of cheese for a mouse. If you give a ghost a cookie, I'm sorry, not ghost, if you give a spirit a darker energy, a cookie, it's going to want the proverbial spiritual glass of milk, and it's going to come right after you. It's going to laugh in your face and say, oh, ha-ha, you're acting just like those... Right. Those, yeah. You know, I mean, because, you know, I was just kind of concerned because when he, you know, called me back and he did not do something, was I forgetting some? But then again, he waited over years. So apparently what didn't work, but... Yeah. Over years time, he didn't take any steps, didn't take any discernment, take any caution. When, when you brought me there to that house, and we're going to go a little long on all these segments. Yeah. I have a feeling it's all right. It's a, it's our last episode of the year, so forgive Woo! us. It's going to be a longer podcast, but Yay. yeah. But you know, when you took me to that to that location, and that young man was a. Uh, you know, he, 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 he. You know, I wouldn't say full on exorcism, and you know, I, I the, tried to, deliverance. Yeah, I try to like really temper when I say exorcism because that is a serious well, that's a very serious enterprise well, explain the, the, the difference between a deliverance and exorcism exorcism is a, a complete battle right. for the soul we're talking the full on soul and salvation of this individual who is spiritually sick right. and you are fighting with a possession you're fighting with an infestation and you oh, through the grace of God so it's not anything you're doing but through the grace of God if I, if, if I may interject real fast, yeah. uh, Ephesians 6.12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and palities, against powers, against worlds of darkness of this world, against spiritual wick- wickedness in mm-hmm. high places. Exactly. So Now, that that's a good uh, point that you brought up there, especially from that from that scripture, is the fact that a lot of people think exorcism is, oh, this person is crazy that we're trying to help them you know, become uncrazy in a way, but no, you're fighting with the possession. You're fighting with an infestation of either one or many demonic presences. Well, a, it's, the the thing ahead. about it, though, is it's a constant uh, battle of wits. Mm-hmm. Really, that's a, the best way I can put it. It's a battle of wits, and it's who's going to get tired first. Is it the exorcist, or is it the demon? And right. the exorcist is working through God. And if that exorcist is working through the straight power of God, mind, body, and soul, completely devoted right. and committed to saving the soul of this person and cleaning them out through the grace of God, yes. not through any power of theirs, then there's no and way... And that's where people need to understand. It's not the, the, the priest doing the job. It's God. Yeah. The, you know, that, you know. uh, literally think of the priest as a lightning rod. Not priest, or, or, or a conduit. Yeah. yeah, something that can conduct that electricity from God. This that God sends down through that conduit into that 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 host. Yes, there. So that battle of wits. Eventually, that demon is going to get tired, and here's why: because they know they can tell pretty quickly who's real, who's not, and if you are real, mind, body, and soul, mm-hmm. fully committed. To the Lord God, and you're doing it for His glory, not your own, and you're complete. And you you know what you're doing. And I was talking with a wonderful researcher, a very well known mm-hmm. researcher in Lynchburg, on that last investigation mm-hmm. with Elite Vixen. Um, we talk about the Roman rite of exorcism and why it's always so much better when you're um, exercising. I guess you could say. Uh, to perform the the ritual in Latin, mm-hmm. because that Latin it's a holy language. It's a holy language that demons cannot stand. And that's something I can get brushed up on. But well, it, it's it's it's, I'll do it's okay. I'll do I'm that. still I'm still rusty on it. But and I, t- I took uh, Latin in both high school and college. But um, it's that's a holy language that well, demons cannot stand. It's like walking heel toe in the presence of a demon. That's the footsteps of Christ there. Well, my frustration lies where, like, you know, my parents stopped going to church when I was around 10, 11. And I'm not mad at them. I was 10, 11 years old. I, I was happy I wasn't, I wasn't going to church. But at the same I mean, time, every Sunday was like, ah, oh, really? Right. <laughs> it, 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 it was a chore and not a pleasure. Yeah. So, and that's where it took me a long time. It's like, I want to go to church. I want to learn about the saints, the angels, the prayers, and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. And now I'm, now I'm, I am feel like I'm playing catch up with all this information because I want to be able to, you know, serve and do battle the way the guy yeah. wants me to do. And, and he's going to give me the knowledge when I need it, so I'm not sure. even worried about that. And, but and that's the thing; it, it goes through. Like I mean, we both do plenty of study. I mean, you're you're an advocate for studying, and that's that's so refreshing to see from somebody. Is like you have to do your research. You have to know what you're doing. It's like you don't put a heart surgeon in a heart surgery who's like brand new. Is like, oh yeah, I call myself a heart well, surgeon, but I've never studied. It's like that person's dead. Well, see, <laughs> you know, I'm a massage therapist. Yeah, and it took me nine about nine months for me to go through school. 
to be able to call myself a massage therapist. Yeah. Now, I love what I do because it's kind of like people go, go and see a, a pastor for, yeah. for, or, for cleansing. Mm-hmm. People come to me for a, for a physical healing yeah. and sometimes mental because the, the brain and the spirit holds on so much stress, so much pain that it reflects on the human body. And that's the thing. It's like with exorcisms and deliverance. And the difference really is deliverance. What you're doing, and a lot of deliverance is you have multiple people there. Mm-hmm. And that's when multiple people, it's it's more prayer. It's more prayer that this person's delivered right. from this darkness, this soul tie. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily demonic presence, but a soul tie. Something negative attached right. to them. An energy that's attached. A deliverance of that. Deli- right. Like even in uh, well, one of the one of the more famous prayers, deliver me, Lord, from every evil. Mm-hmm. Grand peace and Yeah. But um, that's the, the main difference there. But exorcism as itself, of course, is dangerous. It's very serious, very dangerous. Right. Um, I believe exorcism is both studious. I mean, you have to be a student of it. And oh, you yeah. also, oh, yeah. It's also experience. I agree. You have to have been through the experience in well, order. And you've been through it. I've been through it. A lot of other people have been through it. We don't like talking about it because it's a very well. Private that's matter. the thing. We're not private. out there to get money or or even fame or whatever. Do it because A's are calling. Well, you there, know, there is one exorcist out there. He's the popular one. He's actually he used to be the presiding bishop of the United States Old Catholic Church. Uh, I well, really don't tell me later. Tell me later. Yeah, I will. But it's just that that's one of those. I, I think feel, I know you're talking about, but I'm not yeah, sure. We're about to take a break here. Good. But, uh, that's one of those exorcists who's. It's it's popular. It's a commercialization. In right, he, it's always it's a braggarts. It, it, it's very much a braggarts it, it's attitude. It's basically a penis swinging contest yeah. or something. I, and I, just, I think in ex- exorcisms, as them, they need to be private, intimate. They you should never period brag about what you're doing. It, it, it's as emotionally taxing for the exorcist as now. It is. I, I'm okay if you're recording said exorcist if you're treating other for different, other research. people and, yes. and you have their permission to Agreed. look at it. But um, to kind of finish this up and then go to break, right? Um, you <laughs> we, know, I, I believe a lot of spiritual things. Uh, the spirit of discernment, going back finally to full circle to that, right? As well as with exorcism, it's all it's a lot of study, but a lot of experience at the same time, right? You mix those two together, you're on the right path for you know, ha- you know, really honing in on that gift, right? And it is a gift from God. And I'm going to end this uh, segment with, with this uh, quote from Hebrews uh, 4.12 before right. we go on, because this could be a good segue from uh, Spirit of Discernment to the Armor of God. Bam. So, right. for the Word of God is living and active, sharper than a any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and, and discerning, of, discerning of thoughts and intentions of the heart. Wow. <laughs> and the, see, that's the thing. It's like we, fi- we find the word is so, the word is so amazing. It has so much beauty to it, mm-hmm. but it has so much like truth to it in this day and age. Well, well, so, just like that, and hearing that, it makes you it makes you really think too, and it makes it like so. Actually, from what he just said, if you want to rewind this, folks, and then start your the one minute kind of little meditative break we're going to have here do that and really reflect on the words that he just uh, spoke from the scripture and then we're going to come right back and start talking about the armor of god but use those those words from scripture he ju- he just quoted and let's go ahead and take our break and we'll be right back with bridge in the gap are back here on Bridging the Gap here, the only podcast that talks about all things spiritual, paranormal, and you guess that bridges the gap between them. And now here's something 
awesome. We had a pretty long segment in the last go, so we'll try to keep this one a little shorter. But we'll also <laughs> I can't promise anything. You. Again, end. <coughs> excuse me, end of the year podcast. The, so we're just gonna go all. all the December is real tonight. So. It's all real. We're again. That's the weird. That's not. I don't want to say weird, but that's kind of the. The special thing is like we for the first time before podcast we celebrated mass. Uh, almost immediately before the podcast, and right. if, you know, I was telling you earlier, it's like when we pr- partake in the Holy Eucharist and the communion. Mm-hmm. That's food for the starving soul. Not saying our days were bad or anything, no. but we come in here with full spiritual bellies and we're ready to talk. Well, that, or, or, or it's like even like get a tune up for or an oil change for yeah. the car. It's just, exactly. it's just good maintenance. Exactly, you know. uh, but. Uh yeah, so we're on to segment two, which and honestly, it's like I don't know, like because originally our our topic tonight would be about podcast, which we we will do at a later yeah. date. But special guest for that, right, one. right. But today's like you know something about the, the armor of God and the spirit of the sermon. It's, yeah. I mean, it's really a package deal if you think about it. it is. not only is God blessing you with like, insight, knowledge of how to help people, yeah. but He's also giving you the the protection from these. Evil spirit entities, energies and from attacking you, and that's the thing. You have, you have a, <clears throat> a kind of a diagram and right. an illustration pull up on your on your phone there. But the armor of God, it, it's kind of a twofold thing, especially for you know Catholic clergy. Uh, when we vest, every time I vest, like before mass mm-hmm. tonight, when I vested, every article of vestment I have comes is is a part of the armor. Right. The alb, the white garment, the stole. Right, the chasuble uh, for the chasuble, Lord, you, you said uh, my yoke is easy, my burden is heavy. Right. Um, there are also other symbols to that too, uh, spiritual armor. Whereas you know the chasuble is your breastplate. That's your that that's your right. shield. The stole is meant to be the cross we carry. The burden mm-hmm. it's over our shoulders. We're carrying that. The owl, purity, chastity, uh, baptism, right? Pure white and the the white blood of the lamb. But it's it's that armor, and every morning I've, I've noticed this about myself as years have gone by. Again, uh, back years ago when I was kind of at the lowest point in my life, mm-hmm. no faith. You know, it was kind of just let's find it, every it, vice. It, it, it was dark days. Yeah, I mean. let's find every vice I could have and let's partake right. in it. All right. Um, from adultery to alcohol to everything I mean, that I mean, made me pick, just pick a commandment. I mean, pick a any... commandment. I was breaking it. All right, but that's that's kind of the special thing about my life that I feel is like. From that low point, God raised me up. He said, I'm still giving you another chance, and you're going to do this, slap, slap, slap. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, and that, that's, you know, that's something that I've gone from being ashamed about to something I can talk proudly about as my well, growth. And as a th- people, why people think some people have never sin is beyond me. Oh, we're, I mean, the, the saying holds true. I didn't mean to interrupt, mm-hmm. but we let he who has, without sin, cast the first stone. Because no one would be casting stones if that were the true. The only one I've seen uh, throw a stone last 10 to 20 years was the kid from Simpsons, uh, Todd Flanders. Yeah. We got that. Daddy. <laughs> now it's twisted tea cans that people are throwing. And my humanly frustration thinks they all should be aimed at Mitch McConnell. Oh, we're not getting into that. We're, oh, not, we're not going like, into that. Ugh. Oh, boy. Boy, uh, howdy. Yeah, but anyways, nah. uh, but going back to our topic here... Uh, armor of God, spiritual armor. There's a, not a day that goes by now, whether I'm going to work, whether I'm at home, whether I'm going out to the store, something where I'm just like, Lord, put every. And I'm 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 physical about it. I'm like, Lord, put that breastplate on, well, those shin guards, that helmet, protect my head, give me that shield. Here, I mean, I I, I say three prayers every time before I uh, drive. Not every time, but most of yeah. the time. First, the first prayer I actually come up with my own from my own heart. Sure. Uh, uh, Lord, just keep myself safe and vision on the road. Keep mm-hmm. all those around me safe and vision as well. Not quick to anger and respect each other's spaces. Just kind of keep myself in check, although that doesn't help all the time because Tennessee drivers, and that's what I'm going to say, or Nashville for that Lord. matter. But then I say the St. Christopher's Prayer. Yeah. And there was a St. Brendan's Prayer, you know, because there we go. You know, there we go. Plug, but St. But Brendan was in the patron saint of navigators. Well, see, I'm not so. sure because the prize says, "See if you reckon it's it Sacred Heart of Jesus, grant me a steady hand and watchful eye, that none be, none be heard as I pass by. You gave life, I pray no act of mine take away a more mar that gift divine. Protect yeah. this load of travel with me from highway dangers and anxiety. Teach me to use my car for others' needs and never miss the beauty of your world through excessive speed. I pledge to drive with loving concern to my every de- destination. You, you, you gotta send me that one. Yeah, offering each travel hour to you in the spirit of reparation. Let's your Sacred Heart of Jesus, my auto companion, have mercy on me. I learned that when I was twelve. Uh, 
uh, f- folks, growing up Roman Catholic in my household, you were required yearly to memorize prayers. We're talking about the Hail Holy Queen, the Salve Regina. I need Regina. to memorize some prayers. I got some down, but not yeah. all of them. The Act of Hope, Act of Faith, Act of Contrition, the Memorer, the Apostles' Creed, the Our Father, Hail Mary, Glory Be. Well, it was that's that's going into the last segment, and we'll get into that, <laughs> folks. But but going going back into the armor of God. Um, those, those prayers. What you're doing right there is you're putting that right. shield around you, that physical shield. Well, like like for me, in my mind, like like right now, I'm wearing the uh, nice Templar uh, shield right here, but I also have an Ephesus with your crucifix and Saint Benedict's uh, All physical representation right. of armor. And also, like like for me, I have uh, a uh, bracelet with Saint Michael's prayer. And then I have uh, Man of God Ephesians, I think 6, 11, 6, 12, 1 of the 2. Mm-hmm. And then on my right wrist, I have a St. Benedict's uh, bracelet, and then I also have a Navy Veterans uh, mm-hmm. bracelet. It's going to rep- representation in my, you know. You know, armor and sword and shield. Crook, stop um, deceit me, he looks. May the Holy Cross be my light. That's right. that's my Episcopal motto, and that's also something I live by every single day. And that's what's on my shield, I feel. Right. Now, I had this uh, diagram. Uh, I'm going to start from top to bottom, and sure. we we'll go through it yeah. individually. Yeah. Yeah. It says, take up the whole armor of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the uh, full armor of God so that you can make your stand against the devil's schemes. Ephesians 6.11. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the helmet of salvation, and there is salvation and uh, no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which he must uh, be saved. Acts four twelve. Mm-hmm. That's just for the helm, and that's the thing that people that I feel that that in the breastplate, right? And and I even go as far as the sandals. Oh well, the, I, the light. I mean, those three right there for me are the most important because you're protecting your mind with the helmet. Right. You're protecting your heart with the breastplate. Right. You're protecting your feet with the sandals. So if you got to run from a situation, exactly, you don't be afraid to run. Yeah. Well, <laughs> my my be be a brisk pace because my running day is about <laughs> shot. <laughs> well, I'm to the to the point in my weight and in my life where I'm like I don't have to outrun the murderer. I just got to outrun Did you. Did you see all. that? <laughs> right. We well, see that meme about uh, the predator. Uh, what he sees. Uh-huh. <laughs> Twenty six ladies. <laughs> <laughs> over. Oh, see, I, I, I've fallen out of the meme rabbit hole. I need to get back into that. But that's the thing. It's like, and we're we're talking about the um, all the the representations of the armor of God well, that we all, as a spirit, as believers, put on, uh, right. either knowingly or not knowingly, every day. Right. Well, because you mentioned the, the uh, breastplate. That's that's coming up next. Yeah. The, uh, the breastplate uh, of righteousness. He uh, he made him. Uh, who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, so that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Second Corinthians five twenty one. So that, that it's almost a humbling. It's it's very it's very, actually it's very humbling when you hear right. something like that because it's like look, I mean you're talking about righteousness. How much do we hear about self righteousness in the world that we have to have a humble heart, humble heart, breastplate over the heart. <laughs> And especially in the, in this day and age, um, I mean, it, it, this could be a topic for another day. I know we talked about this before, but when I heard Osteen got that four point four million dollar loan, I'm like, every penny of that better be going to the neighborhood. I was um, helping my son take a nap earlier, and uh, while well, he was laying there sleeping and rolling around and you know snorting, and <laughs> you know that mm-hmm. that sound there, folks, is what my son makes when he rolls around in his sleep. That's weird, I know. But <laughs> yeah, that's in, in why he that kicks p- me off the bed. Oh, pretty much. God, but no. I'm, uh, I digress because that was a derail. Um, I was listening Squirrel. to he had. I was listening to different news stations talk about Pastor Greg Locke and literally just tearing him apart. And I will tell you straight oh, up here, God. I have a lot of respect for atheists. Because of how much they have called out his self righteousness, called out his his in a way falsehoods with what he's they call him a pastor of hate. And I'll tell you folks, as, as a I had no devout f- Christian you, you know, it's you know, of course, you know, Christ is the center of my life, but in a respect I mean there are a lot of atheists who I really do respect. Because they have a so much more of a peaceful attitude towards life than a lot of these pastors do. And hearing that, and actually listening to a few podcasts by some atheists, and just getting their perspective on what somebody like Greg Locke thinks, it's very eye-opening. 
Very I, I'd much rather listen to a truthful atheist than a false prophet any day. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I yeah, mean, that's exactly the words in all that ten minute spiel that I was right. trying to get out there. I mean um, But yeah. we're gonna move on to yeah. the shield of faith. The shield of faith. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Hebrews, Hebrews, eleven one. Hebrews, <laughs> Hebrews, Hebrews, Hebrews. Oh, he, uh, he, sounds like a wrestling tag team. Probably is somewhere. <laughs> the Hebrews. But I mean, but that's actually. But think about it, because it is not like we talked about earlier with the spirit discernment and with uh, uh, exorcisms. It is yeah. not the individual. Blocking that that evilness as God, as God. Mm-hmm. he's he is the shortest shield, the, the armor. Whenever I mean, an exorcist goes into a battle like this, and right? You're talking about something that is uh, physically, spiritually, and emotionally dangerous for said exorcist. Oh, Whenever they much. go into that battle, beforehand, the first thing they do is put on that armor. They have to, whether it be a physical something like a stole right. or that spiritual. Hopefully, or, or both. Just a, or just yeah. a, a white light. Because I mean. as their, you know, the power of God is coming through them. They had that shield up, ready for any counterattack that this dark demonic energy is going to throw at them to get them off track because of what they're proclaiming in the name not, of God. Because nine times out of, uh, out of ten, that demon already knows that spirit that, that oh, yeah. exes is on his way to do battle. I yeah, mean, before it's preparing itself, right? Yeah. But that that's cool uh, that you that we're mentioning that with the kind of bridging the gap, haha, between <laughs> the, para, the paranormal and uh, the spiritual when it yeah. comes with the armor of God. Now let's talk a little bit in the next few minutes about as we, as we continue on mm. about the right times to put that spirit uh, that armor of God on before investigations. We used to have something in the teams we uh, founded and researched with where before investigations. Every individual would go off on their own for about right, five to ten minutes, yeah. or as long as they wanted, and they would protect themselves in a certain way. Whether it was a Christian protection, right. whether it was a pagan protection, it, it, or a Wiccan it, it, protection, either way is protection. I mean, yeah. I mean, some is better than none, you know. I mean, and that, I'm, I'm, that's not dogging anybody's that's, beliefs. Or I mean, that, that's yeah, that's another topic, topic yeah. for another day, but, <clears throat> but um. It's just, you know, we had that kind of... That's when I realized as investigators that we had kind of smartened up. That we were really investigating for the right reasons. Because that was our first focus, is protect yourself. And the way we protect ourselves, then and now, that armor of well, God. Well, yes. And and all that comes with experience. Because, you know, the first, our first ever experience was at South Tonal. And we were just retarded kids out there looking for some spooks. No, and basically what we did is, like, the armor of God that we had on, we yeah. got a Toys R Us. It was that... No, we got a Dollar Tree. That Dollar Tree Play Knight's armor. Right. Made out of little cheap plastic. That's what we yeah. had on. Yeah. Whereas right now I feel where we have oh no uh, we're 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 suited up dude we've got Kevlar oh yeah we've got and the, 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 these uh, yeah <laughs> I can't I, get the word I, I, I'm not gonna say I wish a mofo would but honestly sometimes when the days go by and I'm feeling especially spiritually strong I wish a mofo would right but um <laughs> basically jeez I'm never gonna say that again that's Ugh. just that's just that one. But, it's, uh, it's late. It, it's, it, it, it is late. It's folks. easy and year. Yeah. So we've had a what a year, but we'll get into that at the end right. of the show. Um. So continuing on, we're we're on the loins girded with truth. Get your minds out of the gutter, folks. Wow. I I, I, I saw your face, dude. Either ways, <laughs> the loins of truth. <laughs> by the truth, <laughs> by the truth, and do not sell it. Wisdom, instruction, and insight as well. Proverbs twenty three twenty three, the yeah. loins of truth. Uh, <sighs> true loins have never been. Oh, stop, <laughs> man! Lord, I'm sorry. I apologize. There, please. You yeah, know, be I, the pigmies down there in New Guinea. Exactly. <laughs> um, so I've got a question for you though. When oh, it comes to the spiritual armor, all right. Um, on an investigation, which piece of the spiritual armor is the most important for you? When you go into an investigation, say you're about five to it, ten minutes it, away from starting, about to start your lockdown, what part do you concentrate it, on? It's most? a tie between the shield and breastplate, because I'm not going there in an offensive mode. I'm going there as a defense because yeah. oftentimes we get caught in because people are under attack and they're you know tired, worn out, yeah, 
you know, so that being said, if they're worn out, then that spare yeah. entity energy is already got is on on a buffet. So yeah. I need to be prepared, you know, in case it's coming after something more equal to its challenge. Well, with that said, my my wonderful uh, fiance just came out here for a second. Let me ask you a question really quick. Um, in before an investigation. When you are on an investigation, do you do any sort of what kind of protection do you do, or do you do you use beforehand just to get yourself mentally or spiritually ready? It doesn't matter, Christian, non-Christian, anything like that. I mean, is there anything that you just kind of like just maybe zone in a little bit and concentrate and get your mind ready, or what do you do? I mean, what is your team? Does your team? <laughs> you're really yes, I've got a lot of questions. Apparently. <laughs> Yeah, uh, what's the first one? <laughs> uh, what On a personal level, what do you do to um, get yourself ready? I don't really do anything. Okay. Um, that sounds really boring, but... It's uh, not boring. Um, I mean, I, uh, I wear crystals and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Beca- but not because I feel like they have any... Um, Intrinsic, intrinsic. What's the word I'm trying to use? Value. Um, power. Yeah. But intrinsic value. Well, yeah. Yeah, but um, just because I feel like it's a mind thing. Yeah. And uh, so I think I think the only thing I really do is I just kind of like go in there with like kind of like a resolve, a block. So you oh, more she, kind of yeah, me, a mental and, shield. And see, that in its way goes with the armor of God. So that shield itself, well, you were saying some of the most important pieces mm-hmm. of the armor. But see, are the mine shield. doesn't come from God; it comes from myself. Okay, and, and, see, my, that's and my own my own belief and my own mental strength. Well, I, I was gonna say yours is more scientific than spiritual, for like yeah. for lack of there's a spiritual aspect to it. Okay, because mm-hmm. there's there's a part there's a part of me that knows that going into an investigation that you know there's science that's in there that's that can attack me spiritually i mean it's not Agreed. it's not Agreed. just science right I mean, that, 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 you, it's the you unknown both. yeah so, right well i've noticed what i do and i've noticed several times on your guys investigations that whoever's leading that certain investigation will make sure that you guys have some time just to kind of spread out get your minds ready a lot of teams don't do that but i've we, noticed no. you guys... our, our team really focuses on like the, the mental aspect because we know that it's uh, we know that we're our own kind of strength in that way and that's a big factor you just mentioned mental because people are so, are so round up with the spiritual the science yeah the mental is almost <laughs> <getting forgotten. laughs> or, or yeah. just ignored altogether because that's and that's a major yeah i mean key to it well and and, and that's <clears throat> the thing it's like well, i'm sorry that's our co-host oakley my dog is barking at the rain outside yeah, d- demon and all the rain right. is very evil it yeah. is evil but it's like and, that, and that's something that's very professional <clears throat> with your team is the fact that you guys do have that that time just you, no matter what you believe in we mostly, just to get yeah, ready. Yeah, we mostly do a lot of individual stuff. Like yeah. we we kind of take off. our own time to because we all we all believe and and go in very very different directions. Yeah. And oh. then see it's funny whenever we go on car rides together I'll be silent for like 3 minutes and that's me saying that long prayer that I recited to you earlier. And so I mean, it takes us forever to get going on the road because I'm sitting there praying the whole time. There's honestly been times where I've gone into investigations with with crystals that I've quote unquote cleansed or I've gone in before wearing rosaries or mm-hmm. sometimes I've gone in just not prepared at all and just just just, convi- it- just convinced that I'm going to be okay. And sometimes a, that's all it takes. There's a certain uh value when somebody even brings them like a rosary and some that 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 shows in their mind you have that to they, believe they, that it has power yeah they right. think it has right. some sort of protective ability yeah because if the rosary meant nothing to me then i i don't think it would do anything yeah, it's not me. like you're right. saying well i saw this on tv so i'm gonna do it it's like when you say your crystals or your rosary mm-hmm. that has some sort of value to use as a protective it's, it's means, basically so. it's 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 a physical object to to kind of manifest that shield or that energy that yeah. protective kind of quality when you and i and this goes back to the armor of god when we were driving down to south pittsburgh i remember for the last 40 minutes of that drive and i think i'd mentioned that to you i was trying to get my mind right that entire mm-hmm. time i was envisioning this this physical armor going on me and maybe that was a reason that i didn't feel much you know at that particular location even even something like that like like visual visualization of just putting on physical armor is extremely powerful. Agreed. Even yeah. if it's not religious or God related in, in at all, it's, it's mm. really it can be really powerful. Yeah. So I mean, what is the uh, 
Next yeah, one is the sword of the spirit. For the word of God is quick and powerful and is sharper than any two-edged sword, uh, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and the marrow of <laughs> and is discerning discerner of the thoughts and interns of the heart, which I just said earlier, Hebrews 4.12. Uh, and that's my issue, though, is I go into some places with the sword just throwing it everywhere. <laughs> hi ya hi ya And it's just, just throw it out there. Yeah. And... I got you. There was nothing down that hallway. Well, it's there now, so... <laughs> That's nope. interesting, no. that the thought of going in there with a sword. It's like the Black Knight well, from here, uh, Holy Grail. It's some, just a flesh wound. Sometimes there's people who go in there with that sword. Are you, when pre- they are you shouldn't... prepared to fight? Exactly. Well, spiritually, I'm always prepared to go into a battle. I mean, that's but are of... you prepared to be the aggressor? If you're going in with a sword, aren't you being the aggressor? Then? No, no. I mean, if you're going to get... sure? Yeah. I mean, because if you're going to get fought with spiritually, you have to be armed you're somehow. You're going to get fought with if you go in with a sword... I was being facetious when I'm like, I'm going in swinging. I was just trying to get you to smile They're on that gonna one. They're going to swing back. See, of course, Ooh. I bring her around here. It's like, you're doing this. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> oh, wow. you, you, what I sound know. like? You love the abuse. Don't give me that. Do. Abuse? No. <laughs> no, but... Challenging your ideals is now considered abuse, <laughs> yeah. people. <laughs> But you should have known I was just being facetious. Anyways, I digress. But Aww. there, there are pe- there are people that we've been on investigations with who go in there with that sword, and you're like, "I see you." The power of Christ compels and you. And I'm sitting there, it's like you just threw that sword into a wall, and there was nothing there. Well, it is not very welcoming or op- you know to or open to communication with anything that might be there if you're going in with that mentality of of fighting. Yeah. I remember uh, we went to It's this, almost like pro- uh, provocation. I did this investigation at a famous hotel in uh, about almost close, about it's in Tennessee, it's once the eastern, but not that far. Yeah. Um, there's a church across the street from this hotel, and I go in there with my new group, and this uh, kid was was with me, and he went, he went, wants to you know. Um, be a protagonist. He wants to, you know, uh, you know, throw t- you know, throw words out there, and we were in there. Hero of the day, Lord. right? Well, and, we, and we've been in this church before, and we've been messed with some dark craps. So I learned not to poke the bear here, uh-huh. but I'm sitting there, you know, you know, trying to document what I can. He, he's like five feet away from me, just talking smack. I'm like, and all I said was, yeah, if somebody's in here, if you beat him up, just keep spare me. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm just like, I, this camera was expensive. I don't need to fall right. Over. I mean, cause I'm like, I'm not here to be a be a jerk. I'm just here to you know, see you throw him across the room. Well, case in point with all this is no matter what you spiritually believe, um, there's a certain type of armor for all beliefs. Right. And what we believe with the right. armor of God. Um, you know, that that's helped on several different investigations. It helps through everyday life. Right. I mean, there's not a day that goes by if I'm not in, not even if I'm saying mass, but if I'm on the road or going to a job interview or going on my job or just anywhere where I'm putting that armor on because I'm not, I don't know who's out there or what well, energy's out there. Especially with, with me uh, doing massage, I had to be, be cautious because, I mean, this time. It's an intimate like, thing you're doing. Well, I remember one day, I mean, every now and then I'm going to get somebody who does like my massage and, you know, just that happens. But my, my last two clients of the day, I mean, I treated them like I treated, you know, like you're eating a client. And just the energy I was getting was just like, you know, like I was not, you know, making headway. Yeah, with that shield you got, boink, just Pretty much. right off. You know, the second one, the first one, she, you know, in the, uh, the session halfway through, the other one, you know, I was able to, to do the whole session, but I, I could just know that it was not up to her what she liked. Oof. And like I said, I get it. I'm not going to please everybody. But at the same time, it stinks that, you know, you get people who doesn't like your work. And it's yeah. like, you know, you're stuck with that feeling. I uh, mean, it, a lot of people just can't, they can't handle someone who's like, they can't get through. You know, they can't get through that armor. So they, they, a lot of people get mad about that. So uh, th- that being said, I was wondering if, you know, just because like if, cause my spirit is in a higher vibration than theirs or just that. Uh-huh. Because I, I I am in search of the Holy Spirit and want to have that relationship with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. When those who are not in that search and that or in that quest uh-huh. are there, almost repellent against my energy. You uh, know what I mean? Not necessarily. It really depends on if I'm they're sure wanting a to clash. Yeah, I mean, but I but don't think what, they're yeah. purposely going to be like let's. Unless unless they completely would just want to dog Christianity like some like some people say some sort of like flying spaghetti monster bull crab. 
You know, that that's when it becomes more of like Ruth Pellin and, and more hey, of an attack. Hey, don't knock my Darwin fish. Are you serious? It, oh, yeah, I used to have a Darwin fish. Oh, jeez. Well, I'm going to end, uh, end Yeah, we got to end this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we have we, had we, another... We're over 20, this is going to be an hour minutes. and a half long episode it's for the end of the year. One. This is going to be great. But here's the last uh, piece of the armor of God. Okay. Feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. How beautiful are the feet with them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Romans ten fifteen. Hey, to end this, I'll say those sandals have gotten me out of many a situation where I needed to run. <laughs> well, I'm glad it helped because, like, like we said before, my knees, my weight butt, I ain't running unless I'm being shot at. Even I had that's some spiritual there. Birkenstocks on in some of these <laughs> cases, and they didn't give me blisters. <laughs> I'm sorry, she just gave me the worst look. I wish you all were seeing this. This is great. But uh, we're going to go ahead and take our second break. Again, we've gone about 10 minutes long, but it's okay. End of the year episode, it's going to be a doozy. That's what, we're that's getting all excuse. of our frustrations out of this <laughs> wonderful 2020 year into this last episode. So stick with us. Our next uh, and final topic of this year and this episode will be Catholicism and the differences between Roman and Independent. And we'll be right back with Bridging the Gap. Stay tuned. back for our final segment of 2020 the final segment of this episode on bridging the gap the only podcast that talks about all things spiritual paranormal and bridges the gap between them bishop and, darren here with brother brendan vc and this is a long year we, we, we got we dove deep in those two subjects we are about an hour into this so we're, we're making this a longer episode just to kind of end the year a very frustrating year man have you noticed that I, we're this close to the new year, and I have not seen one post from anybody saying "New Year, New Me" or any of that crap. Because oh, we're all shell shocked. We don't know if 2021 is going to be better. <sighs> right? Like, we all thought 2020 was going to be great. We're, we're just happy this year's about to end. Exactly. Exactly. So our our last topic is actually going to be pretty fun for me. It's we're going to discuss Catholicism, not just I, I, that, but the differences between independent Catholicism and Roman. Actually, Catholicism. it's be more of a rant and me busting your chops because I know very. Very little of Catholicism, Roman or otherwise, because I was I was brought up in the church as Lutheran, which I always uh, refer to as Catholic light. It's very similar to the Catholicism. Very much. Very, very much. I, I mean, gotta say. Because, I mean, look at the name Lutheranism. It, that's Martin Luther, right? The man who started the Reformation. He left the priesthood, yeah, got the, mad. <laughs> yeah, basically gave them the finger and you know did their own thing. But that said, I, st- I, I came up Lutheran in, in around 10, 11. Parents stopped going to church, and I wasn't going to complain because I was 10, 11. Yeah. And I missed out on, on a lot of teaching, but you know what? What it could have should, I'm doing that now. Yeah. Here, but, let's start at the very beginning with Catholicism. Let's talk about the word Catholic. A lot of people think uh, to be Catholic means, you know, you're... Head honchos in the church have big hats and they carry canes. No. Right. To be Catholic, it comes from the Greek word meaning uh, Catholicos, which means universal. Okay. You'll see not only in Roman Catholicism or independent Catholicism or even Protestantism during the Nicene or the Apostles' Creed. Let's take the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. Right. Whenever that's said, I've seen sometimes when people have gone like a Presbyterian church. And they'll say they'll hear that they'll be their first time there, and they'll say, "Wait, but they're Presbyterian, not Catholic." The what they're Same saying thing. is the Holy Universal Church. Right. I believe in one Holy and Universal Church. That's all the word well, Catholic the means. The problem is, like, in, uh, yeah, I believe the in, in the uh, you know in, in one church, absolutely. But unfortunately, how many churches do we have? 
It's all materialistic differences. That's the, I mean, the fact is that all these denominational Christian churches believe in the same God who's right. in the same Son who came down and died on the cross. Same the Ten same, Commandments, but... Same Ten Commandments, same resurrection. But they don't, like Protestants, don't believe that Roman Catholics have to go right. through... You shouldn't have to go through the or sacrament purgatory, of purgatory or, yeah. or even the, the, the veneration of saints. And, mm. Yeah. I mean, like, like for me, like, that's what... Like, yeah, I'm, I was never raised Catholic, but just, you know, but what these people have done in the name well, of Jesus Christ. The saints, like, like you got to think about that too. The veneration of saints. People are like, well, you, the Catholics, they worship saints. No, if you ever go to like Washington D.C. or anywhere with monuments, right? You go and you 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 venerate. You look over and you honor the the person uh, on the monument. Like you go to the Lincoln Memorial, you're honoring oh, Lincoln. Can, okay, like you know, slightly out of subject. Like you know, I know the big thing down here in, in the South is the Civil War monuments. Yeah. I'm not gonna get into all that, yeah, but yeah, but yeah. a lot of people go to these monuments to like check out the history and what this person has done. Mm-hmm. No different from you know the the saints. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, I got. You know, St. Michael, St. Benedict, St. Yeah. Brendan, St. Christopher. And they all have, they're all patrons of something, right. too. But, you know, these statues, they're all in honor of a certain saint, like a church's namesake, St. Right. Timothy's Church. Right. A statue of St. Timothy, Timothy to honor the saint, not to give him praise and glory as and we people God. get the misconception where we pray to saints or pray to Virgin Mary, that we pray for their... Uh, we uh, ask them to the, pray the, for us. In a session, yeah. basically say, hey, help well, me out here. Look at the Hail Mary prayer. Holy right. Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Yes. Now at the hour of death, amen. Uh, we don't say, Holy Mary, Mother of God, we pray to you. We right. that, that's, pray for us. Yeah, exactly. But let's go into Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism, and it stayed true for the past few thousand years. Right. Is, well, not few, but a couple thousand years, is the fact that they've been always more associated and focused on traditions and doctrine, canon law, which has rarely changed. In the 60s, you had Vatican II, uh, which uh, during the reign of Pope Paul VI, mm-hmm. you have the Novus Ordu, which is the the vernacular mass. Right. The, the Mass of Paul VI, as they call it, is basically what we were celebrating earlier. Right. Whatever country you're in, use the common vernacular. And, you know, no longer facing the altar, facing the congregation. I mean, but now still, it's a very accepted use the extraordinary form of the Mass, the Tridentine Mass, or in, in other cases with an archbishop like the, the Solemn High Mass. Mm-hmm. Um, but Roman Catholicism is mostly based off of tradition and canon law and doctrine, doctrine, dogma, whatever you want to call it at this point. But what's right. frustrating to me, this is why I don't consider myself Roman Catholic at all, is because it's become less about what God says and more about what the archbishop or the cardinal or the pope says. Makes sense. This person said that. Well, the church says you can't do this. Well, the church says you can't do that. that but yeah. what about what God says? Right. What about what God says? Who God says to love? I mean, here's, here's a question, because yeah. it, people want to say, you know, being gay is a sin, divorce is a sin. Here's a question. Uh-huh. Is... One sin greater than the other, or sin just sin? That's, that is a tough question, because we've been taught through our lives that there are venial, there are mortal sins. Of right. course, murder, rape, right. uh, those are all mortal sins. I mean, that's just kind of around the board in Christianity. Of venial sins, you know, lying to your mom about not making you know, your bed. Right, doing your homework or whatever. Yeah, um, when it comes to those, um, there are sins, I believe, that are greater uh, that do require more, like, personal uh, penance and reconciliation on a personal level. Don't get me wrong. I personally do not believe in the sacrament of reconciliation. I don't believe that a person should have to go to a priest who is supposed to act in the name of Jesus. Right. And you see with the sex scandals, a lot of them don't. Uh, you shouldn't have to go to a priest to feel sorry and repent. Right. That's why Jesus died on the cross, because that temple veil was torn, allowing everyone to go to the Holy of Holies. Yeah, well, you said the key word, everyone. Everyone. It doesn't, and that's right there. We, if you have to go to a priest, I don't believe in hierarchical systems. I call myself a bishop, and I perform the sacrifice of the Mass because it's so, solemn, it's beautiful, it's reverent. Well, but I call myself a bishop because a bishop is a shepherd of a flock. Right. We're all entitled to be shepherds. We all could be bishops. Yeah. To be honest with you, but when you talk about sin, though, I believe there are sins that are greater. I, and when well, I say greater, I believe that are sins that require you to repent more and change your life well, and, more and I than. Think that's where the commandments come in because those are, I think, the crude de gras sure. of the sins. Like the, sure. the first three, you know, is, uh, you know, uh, thou shalt not take thy Lord's name in vain. Thou yeah. shalt not worship uh, grave Im- Im- uh, images, yeah. uh, and thou uh, have no other god before me, and. But that's basically blasphemous because if you want to like, 
I still go back to the book of uh, Abraham, which mm-hmm. is you know the the apocrypha. Yeah, and it's a part where I, I think I can't remember which angel was talking to Abraham. I want to say Uriah, but don't quote me on that. Yeah, but he goes up. Uh, Abraham goes to his father, yeah. and his father was creating. Uh, um, idols out of these stones, stone and wood. Yeah. And Abraham asked him a good question: How can you worship something that you created? Mm-hmm. I mean, that right there struck, I mean, it struck a chord with me because it well, makes sense. Because like, yeah, I worship God because He created everything I see. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna give Him all the praise because He's you know that's the way it should be. Exactly. But I mean, I can I'm not gonna you know you know praise myself for making the scrambled eggs on the oven because I mean that's I mean that's yeah, a breakfast. Exactly. I'm, I mean, pat <laughs> yourself off the back. I mean, because a lot of people can't make scrambled eggs. But, <laughs> right. that's, but I mean, that's my point. We don't have I mean, home ec in school anymore. So, <laughs> but yeah, I totally get your point though. Um, and that that really goes like into this next part when it comes to Roman Catholicism is it's 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 too focused on the rule of man and you know the you know the glorification of man. Right. When you when you see a papal mass from the popes in the U.S. and don't get me wrong, I love Pope Francis. I think he is a wonderful. I think he's a prophet. He's been playing house. Dude. Yeah. He's been he's been on the ball here last exactly. Couple months. He's trying to change the church into a more progressive church to get with the times, to right. for lack of a better word. And I love what he's doing. Acceptance, welcoming for transgender and homosexuals where it hasn't been accepted. Well, I, I think you know the God's love is fu- is is full. And that's where when I brought up the whole sin thing because people automatically wanted to demonize people for being gay and okay, look, uh, it's not their it's not their place to judge. Well, it's and, none and of that's my point. Okay, fine, gay is a sin. So is you know wearing you know so is eating, eating pork exactly. Or, or taking, I, I mean, uh, geez, or, a couple nights ago, her and I had two pork chops the size or of even, Texas. Or even taking Lord's name in vain. That's it. And people say GD and JC well, all the time. Yes, so I am. My salvation. How can you, you buzz know. balls with someone exactly. who's, you know. Exactly. You know. But that's the thing with like, with the with the Roman church, too. It's right. become more and of a I know, glorification. I, mean, I, I, I know. I, mean, I got a handful of gay yeah. friends. I mean, there have been nothing yeah. but, but, but sweethearts in my life. So I'm not going to, you know. Yeah. yeah. Dog them for having something exactly. that could be quote unquote sin, but I'm over here sin in my own way. Well, yeah. I mean, and that's what, and see that's what keeps you. You're very humble of a person because you understand. Uh, and we, I mean, we all it, have this kind of humility about us, I right. guess. But um, with, with the Roman Church, like I was saying before, it's become more of a glorification of man. If you see a papal mass or you know an archbishop's over here or cardinals here and they're visiting from another diocese. Right. Uh, the audience is applauding everything they do. They're applauding their sermon. They're applauding their entrance. And when did this become about, you know, celebrating that this person is here? The archbishop should be there to to help these people glorify God. It shouldn't be applaud this guy. Applaud God. Well, and that's why I'm having issues with these televangelists because there, a lot of these televangelists are talking about what you do, how to spark your life, how yeah. to make yourself more attractive, have more money, and. Guy, no, don't give a rat's ass about any of that. Exactly, and, and, and that's that's and why that's dangerous. I, it is, and that's why I'm I'm I've kind of straight away call me schismatic or whatnot from the Roman right because I am tired of traditions. I'm tri- tired of focusing on what canon law says. I'm tired of focusing on what the church says. Right. I'm focusing on what God says. Now, do I perform the sacrifice of the mass? You are damn right I do because it's reverent, it's beautiful, it keeps my mind focused. Right. And I offer that sacrifice to the Mass every day because I feel that in my mind, heart, body, and soul. And, he, and that goes into a place going into independent Catholicism when it talks about ordination. Ordination in my mind, I didn't mean to keep going here, but go, go is through Christ, by Christ. When Jesus ordained the disciples during the ceremony of the, the uh, during Pentecost, he didn't have put on a mitre. He didn't put his hand. Right. He, he didn't say, "Okay, all the bishops around, gather around. Let's say these words, this prayer of ordination." Now they're ordained. What scripture is it saying that to uh, to pray in private to God? Um, uh, that's um. Hold on. Uh, you have to use. You... Go ahead. But no. But but just going into that, it's like ordinate Like I said, ordination by Christ through Christ, and now the church is so focused, and even these schismatic. Uh, Catholic churches, which are still considered independent, uh, considered independent, are like, well, this person's ordination doesn't count because this person was ordained online. They didn't go through the the training of the church, the training of the church in canon law. Right. So I, I'm going to interrupt you for a second. This is Matthew six, uh, verse five through six, and you, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. 
for the love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their full reward, their reward in full. But when, in, but when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then uh, your father who sees uh, what is done in secret mm-hmm. will reward you. Key word there is secret. Here's the thing I'm going to go off of with that is the fact that a lot of my fellow bishops and clergymen, I, I know several dozens of bishops around the country who are ordained online, right? and they keep the faith in their heart and soul in, in, right. in their mind more piously and more reverent than I see half of these eight, nine-year ordination right. scholars, church scholars. Right. Their faith is on such a higher level than the, these uh, scholars well, and these historians and these these people who've only earned the right to no right to perform the sacrifice of the mass. And th- right there, whenever I do that every single day, that's my time alone with God. That's my right. time to thank Him. That's my time to pray to ask Him. Right. What, what can I do more, God? And right. That's that's why I don't do live masses. That's why I don't have a huge congregation. That's why I don't go out and say, look at me, I'm a Right, person. right. And, you know, but people might, might listen to this, what well, we're talking about right now, well, that's the, we're, this is the topic, this is yeah. our discussion point, it's about... You know, the you know, the like, difference between Roman Catholicism and an independent Catholicism. Right. Now, here's the thing, when it comes mm-hmm. to independent, there are some schismatic branches of independent Catholicism that still consider themselves a Roman Catholic. The old Catholic Church right. of America well, and the United States... If you go back to the old Nicene Catholic Creed, Church. there you go, you know... I mean, Exactly, and a lot of people, uh, they don't know that the word means universal. Right. One universal church. And that's what independent Catholicism is trying to get to nowadays. When they say universal, more inclusive, regardless of your gender, regardless of sexual orientation, or how you you describe yourself. Right. Regardless of anything, everybody is entitled to proclaim the word of God. If you feel it in your mind, body, and soul, you can be a woman, you can be a homosexual. Right. You are entitled to holy orders. But, you know, but to go back to the beginning of our uh, episode here, go back to discernment, mm-hmm. that Holy Spirit is going to let you know, exactly. okay, this is, okay, I need you to do this, not this, stay away from this. Exactly. You know. I've had, that, that discernment's been in me, per, on a personal level, from early age five. Right. If not If not earlier, that I've always wanted to have this close relationship with God. And I wanted to proclaim his word in some way, shape, form, or fashion. And this is the way I feel God has chosen I, me to do I, so. I give a brief... Uh, this happened... I, I was 6th or 7th grade. Yeah. And I just got off the bus. And for no reason, this kid who is friends with my kids tried to fight with me. And he mm-hmm. started throwing hands. And I'm, I'm ducking and dodging and... You know, I don't know. You know, he just basically was being a boy. Yeah. But out of nowhere, a car shows up, and it was my well, it's my brother in law, but at the time, it was my sister's boyfriend and his friends mm-hmm. coming out of nowhere and mm-hmm. get me in that car, you know, and get me out of there. And I mean, I feel like okay, the, the Holy Spirit, okay, he's in trouble. Get him out of there now. Yeah. And I, God was watching out for me that day. Yeah. I mean, and there was that discernment there. I mean, and but here's something know. is like um. Going into independent Catholicism, when I'm talking about like welcome, more welcoming, more inclusive, right. more progressive, uh, Roman Catholicism is very strict uh, in right. terms of who gets to participate in the sacraments, who's eligible. And, and Communion. That, I'm a divorcee, All right? In the Roman Catholic Church, I'm not entitled and, and see, to the that, sacrament. That, of that whole communion. who's eligible. I've always found that interesting because mm-hmm. in one hand it's saying that anybody, any man, any person can come to Jesus, but yet you had to come, go through a pastor, b- bishop, I mean, you know, yeah, you father, have to, brother, whatever. It works like when Kay and I are, were trying to get married in the church, yeah. and I had to go through a tribunal for them to see if we can marry in the church. No, thank you. I've already gone through my divorce. I don't need to go through another, you know, trial. Yeah. Do you, who who gives them the right to judge right. me now? Well, but it's just for me. It's, it's a whole simplistic double standard. There is right. Okay, yeah. either make can go to God, but he had to get time to to. I'm not allowed to have holy communion right now. I can't go into a Catholic church and get holy communion because I'm a divorcee. But and that, and that's the thing. The holy we were talking about this before we went on the air. Communion is food for the starving. It is not a reward for the good. Better still, I've never been to communion once, but when I go to a mass, I, I just follow like 
Okay, yeah. just follow the and you should be entitled to that. Does. You should be entitled to that completely. And you that's know. what independent Catholicism offers. Everyone's entitled to that sacrament. The sacraments are still just as holy, just as special, right? But they're more inclusive. Now, there are like Sedificanist, uh, who Sedificanist and Society of Saint Pius X. These independent Catholics more so believe that the the real Catholic Church is before Vatican II. Before, mm-hmm. And any pope after that, or anybody who believes in the post-Vatican II, the Novus Ordu, uh, the Mass of Paul VI, mm-hmm. no, they don't count as Catholic. They don't believe in Pope Francis, Pope John Paul, Pope Benedict, uh, Pope John the Twenty Third, Pope Paul the Sixth, Pope John Paul the First, the Thirty. So they AC. just pick which popes they recognize. It, they pick everybody before and during the pontificate of Pius the Tenth, um, because they were they are that strict. I um, mean now. It's 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 frustrating to even see that too because it shouldn't even get to that point in Christianity because no. that's completely missing the point of what Christianity is and making that the completely materialistic and traditionalistic. Um, well, it it, it, it goes to the fact where okay, I don't like what this guy's saying, so I, I, he's he's not my pope. He's not a pope, so I'm gonna create a pope over here or, or not. Well, you know, that's just, a lot. I mean, look at Pope Michael. I mean, there's a documentary on this guy, uh, David Baldwin, um is his, is his birth name. He was. "Quote unquote," elected to the papacy. Um, basically, he calls himself Pope Michael. He doesn't agree with um, the post-Vatican II Church, and he was actually kicked out of the Society of Saint Pius X. That says something. When a set of a group like that in a schismatic branch kicks you out, <laughs> but, but here's the thing. Here's why I personally am my style of independent Catholic, completely inclusive sacraments. Everybody's entitled to them. I was telling you earlier, we were saying Mass. If you want to go home and say Mass yourself, take my sacramentary over there, go home and do that. Because you can't, you're entitled to it because your mind and heart and your soul is in the right place. You, you will offer that sacrifice for God, not for yourself, not for glory, not for glitz, not for glamour. Right. If you do, if you offer it for God, it's a completely valued, uh, a valued and valid. Now, the thing I want to get at to go into that really quick is apostolic succession. The Roman Church believes they have complete claim to what they call apostolic succession, and what that right. is basically is from Saint Peter, the first Pope, the creator of the, the Roman Catholic faith, as as what is told. Mm-hmm. Every bishop from today succeeded. From a bishop in line to Peter, Peter ordained the first bishop. After that, bishop all right. the way up to so and so. You're in line with Saint Peter. I believe it's hogwash. I believe apostolic succession has no uh, stronghold on whether you're saved or not. I right. think it's all hogwash. You can't. <laughs> I think, it's, like once again, it goes back to the first topic: discernment. Exactly. I mean, now do I believe? Like I said, I don't believe in apostolic succession. I believe if if you want to. Say a mass, say a mass. If you want to praise and worship, praise and worship. As long as you do it for the glory of God. And, and, and that's the X factor. I mean, there's no set way of worship. You just worship how you want to worship through your heart and you, in your spirit. How you want to represent Jesus. How you want to give that love and respect and that gift. I mean, just... It, it, exactly, because I mean, a lot of people lose... Uh, the true focus should be on Christ and the sacrifice and the resurrection. But they, and, and it goes to who has the bigger hat, who, how long has this guy been an archbishop, how long has this guy been a cardinal, uh, how many followers does this mega preacher have over here, blase, blase. Um, that's why I chose independent Catholicism is because and, and, it offers the, 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 the beauty and the sacrifice well, and that's the what you, that's, and We mentioned that to me. That, you know, at first, it's like, what the heck is he talking about? But then you know, the more I sat there and let it stew in my brain, like, you know, it helps me understand that better because... There's, like, a, there's, like, a, freedom. there's a freedom. Right, because, like I've always said, there's a lot of, the, of Roman Catholic, the history, mm-hmm. and, the, and the saints, the angels, all that, I find amazingly beautiful yeah. and so enriched in history but when you when you talk about the the hypocrisy and the indulgences and the just the corruption, I was like, no, I want nothing to and do. And how that. exclusive? I mean, right. the, the Roman Catholic Church builds so many walls, whereas you know, independent Catholicism, it's it's very much tear the walls down. Everybody come to God, and I if mean, you do what you have to do to worship. I mean, part of me, you know, and especially you know, the past generations, you know, a lot of it's just a bunch of old, uh, old, rich white dudes trying yeah. to keep everybody else in line. Exactly, I and mean, that, that's what. It, and like, and I've been asked before. Well, you know, if it's a, you know, if you feel like everyone can worship however they want, why are you sitting here investing before um quote unquote mass? Why are you doing this? Because everything I do has a symbol, and it makes me, on a personal level, with my relationship, right. feel spiritually. 
fed and it makes right. me feel spiritually healthy and when I'm spiritually healthy I'm offering you know I'm offering my, like a, my full self right to the glory of God you know and I'm I, like for me because I'm still very with my own spiritual journey I, I feel like I'm still having toddler mm. feet and, but, but, and by by that I'm oh we're still, all there we're but, all in that area you know but I'm to the point where a lot of, there's a couple of people in my life who are looking at me for that spiritual guidance and part of me is like well I'm still trying to figure this out myself but you're but stronger than you think but that said I mean half the time when these people come for me for guidance it's not my words coming through it's not my it's him mm-hmm. using me like once yeah. again as a conduit yeah. to help these people out yeah. I mean there comes a point to go off that during the mass during the uh, the consecration of the bread and wine the transubstantiation right. into the body and blood of Jesus Christ and, and Catholics I think independent and Roman believe alike it's not a symbol it's the real transubstantiation right. but this is becoming the real body and blood when we partake this right Every time when that prayer, that Eucharistic prayer, and that consecration takes place, mm-hmm. there there is a bond, I feel. Right. That, I mean, I still feel very spiritually young. But I know at that point, it doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter how old you are spiritually. Right. You're at that level where it's that personal relationship between you mm-hmm. and God. And at that point, you that's the most intimate, in person, in that, all that matters is you and God. All that matters is that glory that you're doing. Right. And, and, and more times than not, I haven't done it lately, I need to start doing it to start tomorrow. Anytime I, I, go, to, I go to work, I get my room, get, you get everything set up for my day, and usually I go in, I try to read at least a chapter or two of the Bible, mm-hmm. but, I'll, I, but I pray. I pray mm-hmm. in my room, I, I close the door, and just, you know, I'm trying to, God, Lord, God in my hands, help yeah. heal these people, allow me to be your vessel. Yeah. And I remember uh, two different times. Uh, this, I've helped a lot of people, obviously, but two that stick out in my mind. Um, was when I, like maybe I was maybe a few months into doing mm-hmm. a massage, and I was working with this guy. who's telling me he had issues around his glute and hamstring area. He's like, "Well, I may need surgery," and he's wanting to try this to see if he can avoid it. So I was like, "I do what I can." Sure. So I I get in, go to work, and you know whatever you know session ends. He comes back to me, you know. A month later, and like, man, I gotta tell you, man, you, I don't know what you did, but I go and see my doctor. He did X rays. He comes back to me like, sir, I don't know what you did, but you don't like any surgery. Power of God, man. I, I, I was, I was Power like, of God. You know. And then I had another lady. Um, she was uh want me to work on her, her arms and her hands, but she want me to uh take it easy on her wrist, but she's mm-hmm. gonna go through uh surgery for carpet tunnel. Sure. And then okay, so I go to uh, her arms, and you know. I started feeling something around her shoulder, like, ma'am, I'm, I, 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 for, it's, for me, I can't diagnose, you know, because it's a, a beyond my scope of practice, but I just told her, like, ma'am, I'm not, you know, telling you anything about, uh, get your shoulder checked out here, because I, I just, just, just did, did it feel right. Yeah. So, she comes back a few months later, and she's like, you're the one who told me about my shoulder, and get a check, like, yes, ma'am. Like, well, like, I went in for my surgery for my wrist, and then when I came in too, uh, the doctor told me, like, well, uh, we kind of made a mistake. And she's like, okay, what happened? Like, we, we went in to fix your, uh, to work on your uh, wrist, but upon, you know, c- getting in there, we realized that your shoulder was, was displaced. So. Wow. And, like, like, uh, like I, I don't know. I was just, I was just going that's with a, what I was feeling, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's, and, and see, I, I get, like you said, that's power of God, man. It's just, it doesn't matter. You know what your hierarchical stand is in a church, or what position you or title you have. Right. It really all boils down to your personal faith and your relationship with Christ. And like, and and just kind of finalizing our topic on this one. Um, oh yeah, 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 this is a long <laughs> episode. Care. I'll tell you, I, I'm loving it. I'm no, loving um, it. But bring it on. Let's say Roman Catholicism and just completely too strict for me. Uh, focuses on canon law. Focuses on tradition and doctrine to the point where it's not about the church it's not about god anymore no like, see i, I even no. messed up there it's not about the church i almost said church it's not about god anymore it's about the church and their laws it's, right whereas with independent catholicism you have such a freedom you have a freedom to say a mass you have a freedom to sit here and pray and talk right. and, and not worry about tithing I, i'm kind of worried yeah. about tithing because yes you should 
I have no problem giving to a church if I know that money is going for a you good use. You shouldn't be guilted in giving. Right, it right. A lot of point. churches will send you envelopes to make sure that you put money like, in. I've gone to different, like, grottos or shrines where, yeah. you know, they ask people for, like, a little donation. Even now, then, you know, hey, I, put, I might put a five in there, a 20 if I got one. Yeah. Just, you know, because what they got there is gorgeous, and I want them to make sure they're you know, sure. Keeping, that, keeping up that work. But it's like you, you watch these televangelists. Hey, give us your money, and we'll send you the seed of God. And, and yeah, whether we're a tailor made suit, I'm like, <laughs> I'm not well, see, you. what you're doing when you go to those grottos, though that that is an amazing form of tithing because you want that beauty to be preserved, and you know it's going there for the right reason. Agreed. And in a way, you're helping. You're helping right. preserve that for generations. And that's come. why that, I, in, that preservation may help somebody. And I, and that's the thing I'm, I'm actually working on as, as a personal project because. I didn't know grottos existed. I mean, I know what a grotto is, but you know, a lot of people, it, it's a Italian for cave. Yeah. But a lot of people uses these, you know, different mineral composites to uh, create these beautiful shrines yeah. or what you would call it, you know, for to Jesus Christ yeah. or to the apostles or the saints or these beautiful structures of history and faith. You know, and it's, you know, it's, it's just showing respect and, and honor. Yeah. Uh, people get honor and worship completely crossed, and you, know, you can honor Saint Michael, you can honor the Virgin Mary. Oh yeah, you not worshiping, you just showing them the the reverent the rever- the reverent mother of God. Respect. I mean, right. the blessed mother is the blessed mother. I mean, I mean, she's mom. She's period. mama bear. You don't take off mama bear. I mean, because if the baby bears around, mama bear is going to be around too. And that's the thing is, like you talk about the Virgin Mary. It's you know, and she sacrificed. She she gave up her human. I mean, she gave up a lot in order to be the handmaid of the know, Lord. I mean, and I have nothing but love for, for Mother Mary, and that goes without saying. But you but know, she's not the Christ. But but no, not even that. I want to start talking about more about Saint Joseph because that man, that man gets almost no respect. I mean, I mean, well, here's it, the funny part: is starting 2021, Pope Francis is actually making that the year of Saint Joseph. Bam. Yeah, uh, that I mean, he, that's been I mean, announced, and uh, well, like, and you're right, he doesn't get the the reference. I mean, reference. imagine, okay, he so, raised Jesus. Say, say that Caleb was pregnant, you know, by some miracle means. Which I wouldn't. The, my humanistic side would be just like this and be like, uh, like, wait a minute, now. you want to go back and tell me the truth? <laughs> like, I, like, I have questions that need answers, but, but you know, he. I mean, things to God has said, Gabriel, Gabriel's like, hold up, Joe. Like, I know you're mad. Hear me out. <laughs> yeah, just hold on. And what had happened was, <laughs> oh, uh, so with that, you know, uh, are there any other questions you want to ask me about independent Catholicism or just uh, just Catholicism in general before we wrap it up? Uh, I mean, I know, well, I think well, you, you uh, discussed the whole bishop thing, so that's been pretty much... Yeah, I mean, out. like, the, the term bishop in the, in the Roman Catholic Church... It's a hierarchical term. I mean, right. all it is is right. basically this guy gets a hat and a crozier, which is the cane, mm-hmm. and a ring, and so he is the governor. Bishop means governor in the there, Roman there, Catholic there Church. There you go. Whereas bishop in the independent, in my in branch of the independent Catholic Church, means shepherd of a flock, and anybody's entitled to that. It's not right. just because I'm a bishop doesn't mean I have any more spiritual power over you or anything. I don't have any hierarchical power at all. Just because I'm a bishop doesn't mean that, you know, well, I'm in charge did, of be, anything. Well, if you have power, then why are you stuck in a two-bedroom apartment now? <laughs> oh, Lord, man. Don't get, don't go, uh, don't want to get started on that one. <laughs> no, but, you know, that's, nah. that's just a, that's, that's a term I chose when uh, I got into ministry that I felt was, it, it led well, me, you, you know, you, you as a shepherd. You with that. Because because, like, and as, as, you know, a spiritual, you know, defender. Right. In, in the well, and that's why I, I would you fight spirit, off the wolves, and well, that, shepherds do that. Well, that's why I went with, you know, warrior, warrior of Christ or soldier of Christ, because yeah. I am a Navy veteran. But people, well, you're, you're a sailor, you're not a soldier. Yeah, well, I learned how, how to it's, shoot a 9 millimeter 12 yes, gauge. You are a soldier. Stand watch. You so, are a soldier. I mean, but yeah. yeah, and it's, uh, the, the, yeah. a lot of people, like, and I get it where people are like, well, you know, there's a lot of bishops out there who do it just so they can wear the hat and have the cane and play right. church. And, and I understand their concern. But... but if they were to sit down with me and talk, they would understand very quickly that's not my forte right. and not my, not my ammo no. with this. And, and that's, why, like, that's why I've been working with you with this because this... The stuff. I mean, we're definitely. Uh, you know, we're doing stuff for Jesus Christ. I know that because yeah. we've been friends for almost ten years now. Five or t- over ten years. Two thousand nine. Yeah, crap. Yeah, yeah, eleven years almost. Yeah, 
So, but even still, yeah. you know, because especially with stuff you went through, I mean, yeah. we both went through our things, but it, it's funny when you're going through your trials and tribulations, you know, and, and blink of an eye, who's your friend and who's just, a, yeah. you know, I you lost know. a lot of people. Yeah. I lost a lot of people. You stuck around. And, well, you know, the, that's the thing is, like, the, the people who I lost, I found out very quickly with those people. I didn't want them you, around anyways. You get to know people's true colors when you're going through some things. Yeah. And those people have kind of come back around, but in a way, I'm distancing myself because spiritually, I don't need that kind of negative. Well, you know, that, speaking, it's funny because I was going through something similar. And my pastor, uh, I, I, I went, I'll name drop this gentleman, John McClendon, because... yeah. This dude has been so patient with me. I love this man. But yeah, I remember having a conversation with him where you have people, you have three separate uh, categories, quote unquote, for people. You, you have your, um, the people you see around the way, like a church or work, whatever. Yeah. You, you work for him. Like, yeah. You, you talk about sports or something lighthearted. And then you have you know, the middle people where, you know, you know, they know a little bit about your life. You might know, like, you know, your wife's name or your son's name, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. And then you have people like, like you and I where we're, we're brothers. I mean, short of our social security numbers, just very little we don't know about each other. We've kind of been through the right. gamut of, of good and bad things. You know, that's like, there's a handful of people, like, if I need something, I know who to call. Yeah. And that's, you know, Likewise. where, you know, yeah. you know. But, you know, that's the thing. It's like, and that's, you know, I knew when we started this, like, a lot of people would look at me as an individual in the ministry and be like, huh, you remember the life he led? Yeah, there's no way this guy has a bishop. But I knew you, being as spiritual as you were, you knew the growth that I had as a person, right. as well, an individual, and where my heart and my, my spiritual soul it, were. What, what I find funny is people forget a lot of scripture in Blink of an Eye when it comes to people. <clears throat> St. Paul m- murdered oh, yeah. Christians because of what they believe. Look at Mary Magdalene, too. Look at Mary Magdalene, of all people, adulteress, the top well, adulteress I, of her time. I, that, she, I, I will uh, play devil's advocate. That is a, uh, her, a scuttlebutt created by the church. That, you know, actually, say, uh, Mary Magdalene was never a prostitute, never a lady of the night. She was actually from a wealthy family. But it was in the Word, though. Hmm? But it was in the Word. In one of the Gospels. No, well, they're confusing Mary Magdalene with another Mary, because Mary, you, there's okay. a whole yeah. bunch of Marys yeah, 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 in yeah. there. So that's that's a common misconception. Yeah. I'll give you that. But Mary Magdalene actually came from a very wealthy, to do, well-to-do family, so she had nothing to do with selling her body, so. That we know that we know of, granted. <laughs> wow, okay, Woo, 35 minutes in. But, um, so what we're going to do, hey, this is a long episode, it is a year-ending episode. Folks, let's be real, 2020 sucked. This year sucked. It was the, the, Financially, it sucked. It Spiritually, was the, it sucked. It was the year of the Bohica. If you want, if you want to know what Bohica Look it means, up on our, our, our just simi attacks, and I'll let you know our message. Uh, yeah, a lot of things sucked this year, but guess what, folks? If you're listening to this, you're alive. You're breathing, uh, you know, things. And I, I'm not a fan of when people like, it could be a lot worse. Um, that doesn't help. Uh, but, just, you but, know, but you actually, know? It, yeah. perfect example, the natural bomb that happened in Christmas. That could have been so much worse. Hundreds of people uh, could have been killed. Easily. But, first of all, kudos to, to those young men and women who got, those police officers that got in there and said, okay, y'all, y- y'all need to get out of here Less than now. three Time years on the job, too. Less than three, all rookies. And they... Not rookies, but young Because of them. Right. Because of their heroics. And there was one gentleman, I, I can't remember who, I didn't know who it was, but they said it was God speaking to him, you need to get out of here now. A lot of people I've heard who were actually in those apartment buildings had that same inkling like who that that felt that that spirit that you need this is not so i mean, I mean but that's that's the thing is like there uh, through that tragedy you know i don't know who anthony quinn warner was i don't know what was he was spiritually going on with him i i pray for his family i, I pray think for him. there was definitely a spiritual battle there because he made a conscious decision like i don't want anybody else to hurt from this i you know if it, yeah you but, know he but he wants to mm, he wants to take himself out through the tragedy of his suicide and through all this, we saw what Nashville, not just Nashville, but humanity can do. Absolutely. We saw the true heart of humanity right. in the people who risked their lives to save other lives. Absolutely. And how the city, right, through all the political bull, well, I'm going to say the word, through all the political bullshit right. that's gone on this year. I'm at the end of the year, folks. Give me a break. <laughs> right. um, 
you know, you just... You saw what true hearts on Christmas, even though it's a tragedy, could do. Right. And you're still seeing that right now. And that's... that's Remember the last podcast we were talking about? Where is that, that peace and joy and togetherness? I think we got our answer. Unfortunately, in the unfortunate circumstances, we found the well, answer that in, a, in a little bit. I mean, there's still look, arguments. But look at about the floods, the you know, the yeah. bad weather. I mean, even nine yeah. eleven. It took something that huge. And that's the for to get the country that's, that's to, get, part. to get the head out of their butt yeah. to be at that's, the very that's, least respectful. That's and, humanity now. But we have so. gotten so far from that. It's, it's sad, but that's another topic for another day. So. I know. But, you know, it's been a very frustrating year, but there's been a year of blessings. A lot of people, and I'm not saying that, well, it's biased opinion because he's my son. Uh, I got blessed. I'm going to try not to get emotional, but uh, I got blessed big time. I, folks, I should be dead. I'm going to go ahead and let you know that. I should be dead right now because of the life I was living right. in 2018 and before. God saved me. And through that, through the growth I had, through my fiance helping me in this process. You two went through some more together. We went through hell and back. With and against. It's very rare to see two people go through hell and back. Complete hell. Like the tenth level of hell. And come back healthy and yeah. addiction free. And with a kid as beautiful as that. And not just on a physical level because he's gorgeous. But that, oh, that, that kid that has spirit. a smile I mean, and yeah. a spirit. But... God. Um, I should be dead right now, folks, but by the grace of God, I'm alive and I'm thankful because he put into my life this past May. He said, you know what? You're ready for this, Darren. You and Kay are both ready. You're at a place where right. I think you're ready for this. You're ready to minister in a way to your own son. I'm right. going to give you one. So he brought Gabe into our lives, and I've had a lot of people tell me this. Gabe saved 2020 for my family for my friends because of just his pure joy of being here around people as, as much of a people person as he is he's oh, saved every time he sees me he's grinning ear Exa- to ear exactly exactly and like every you could have a bad day come in that kid smile at you and everything's fine mm-hmm. and that's on a personal level my son saved 2020 I want everybody out there before we end this and I'm going to give you about 20 to 30 seconds I don't care if we run any longer. I mean, what's the point now? <laughs> but, yeah, um, at this point, that, that, that ship has sailed. Take 20 to 30 seconds silently and think of something that saved this year for you. It, it may be hard to do so through all the pain and loss and all the bullshit. <sighs> but take 20 to 30 seconds and just, in your own way, thank God, thank whoever. Just figure out, think of something that saved this year for you because we are less than... 26 hours from this atrocity of a year being over with let's end it on a good note somehow so in the next 30 seconds think of something that you've been blessed with that saved this year for you I do certainly hope that everyone was able to find something that saved this year for them um, through all the, the suffering, the loss, through the frustration, uh, through all the division that this country and this world's been through, uh, through the sickness of the pandemic. Um, and, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to say this straight to Pastor Greg Locke. This is a pandemic. This is what a pandemic is. I know you've been alive 44 years and you've never seen a pandemic, so this must not be it, but it is. This is a pandemic. A lot of people are dead because of it. So get your head out of your... Uh, your your holy bud. And, yeah, and take well, stock of the fact well, that not the, many people have been sick on your end because you, you like having these giant super spreader events. What's the number now? 330,000? 330, 330,000 people. Yeah. Um, but and folks... It, and, it, and it's not stopping. No. With that, it's been a, it's been a year. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of, you know who, who we unfortunately lost today? Uh, Ginger from Gin- uh, I Gilligan's saw Island. that Gilligan's Man. Island. Man. So and that's all. That's COVID. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. M- M- Mr. Greg Locke. Ooh. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, if you lost someone from COVID, folks, right. your prayers. I mean, our our prayers are with you, and I know that offers no, you know, 
help because it, I mean words are words, but right. you just know that you're on our hearts. And in this new year, 2021, as best as possible. Let's start it, you know, with on a, on a good note. Um, so with that said, yeah, you know, I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas. I hope everyone, even if it was virtual, I hope you were able to see your loved ones. Right. Um, let's continue to be kind to each other as as best as possible, <laughs> even though it's frustrating. Even though we just ripped on, on Greg Locke. Yeah, I know, I mean, right. I need to practice what I preach, definitely. Yeah, but, but um, he, he had it coming, so for we'll, we'll leave it up there. Mr. Brendan VC over here, uh, this is Bishop Darren Marteau. We love you. Blessings of Jesus Christ on each and every single one of you. Let, this, let's tw- let 2021 be in a wonderful year. Um, so with that, have a great night, and we will see you all in 2021 for episode 9 of Bridging. <laughs> we'll see you next year. Yeah. Good night, good news. We'll see you all then.